Do you wish you could be the present mom you've always wanted to be, but still need to provide an income for your family? Are you tired of scouring the internet for legit jobs that will replace your income and that you can do from home in your PJs? Hey friend, welcome to the Virtual Assistant Mama podcast. I know you're over there Googling jobs for moms, legit work at home jobs, or start a side hustle, yet you can't figure out how to take that first step. So instead, you stay stuck, do nothing, or start random side hustles to try to make quick money. Becoming a virtual assistant is the answered prayer you've been waiting for. My name is Ariana, and I'm a former teacher turned work at home mom who replaced my teaching income as a virtual assistant in just six months. I did this by taking a step of faith and following the dream that God placed on my heart to be home with my babies. Mama, your dreams pale in comparison to God's dreams for you. Imagine offering services that light you up, working with clients who value you and pay you what you're worth, and having a job that works around your life and not the other way around. This is the podcast for you. It's time to take that first step. Are you ready? Here we go. Having been in the virtual assistant world for over four years now, there's a lot of things I've seen that work as far as building your virtual assistant business, but there's also quite a few things I've seen that do not work. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you three things that you should not do as a virtual assistant and what you can do instead. So I want to give you the tacticals on what you should be doing and what to avoid. So let's just jump right in. Number one, the first thing you should not do as a virtual assistant is you should not offer a whole bunch of different services. I know it can be tempting, especially if you really love, you know, doing a whole lot of different things. It can be tempting to pick a whole bunch of different services to specialize in, but then nobody knows what you're actually the expert at. Nobody knows what you can 100% completely help them with. So it's much better to pick one, maybe two services that you will be seen as the go-to expert in. Now, if you want something that does allow you the flexibility of doing a bunch of different things, pick a service that kind of has that built in. So like an online business manager, there's so many different things in a business. So if you really love multitasking, having variety, that might be a good service to offer for you. Podcast management, you're doing a whole bunch of different things. Pick something that you absolutely love, but that people will come to know you as the go-to for that specific service. All right, the second thing that you should not do as a virtual assistant is you should not work with anyone who will pay you. Now you're probably thinking, excuse me, like I want to make money. But I don't want you to work with people who are going to just drag you down and make you exhausted and make you not want to do this anymore. Because If you're listening to this podcast, it's most likely because you're not happy in your nine to five anymore. I don't want you working with people who are going to drag you down just like your nine to five is. I want you to pick people, clients to work with who light you up, who you're so excited to support their business, their business's mission, and all those things. If you're working with someone who is dragging you down, it's going to take you a lot longer to get the services done for them that you're offering because you're not going to enjoy it. So yeah, it's going to take longer and you're going to end up wasting money in the long run because you're spending more time on their stuff that you don't enjoy than you could be focusing on things that take you less time that you do enjoy and make more money. Take this from somebody who did not listen to my own advice when I first started as a virtual assistant. I just you know, would push down those red flags that I saw in potential clients on discovery calls. And I'd be like, no, if they want to hire me, like I'll deal with those red flags. It'll be fine. I ended up with a client who was kind of a disaster. She would tell me what she wanted. I'd get it done. She'd completely change what she said. And I'd have it in writing too, like like proof of what she wanted. And then she'd completely change and I'd be stressed out. My daughter, I wasn't spending as much time with her as I wanted to because I was always like tweaking things for this client. I wasn't charging more for those tweaks. I was up so much longer than I should be after my daughter went to bed trying to get this stuff done to make this client happy. And it was just not possible to keep her happy. Like people pleaser in me wanted to just 
get her to say she loved something and that just not was not going to happen. So I eventually realized that I had to let her go for my sanity. And I was really scared because I didn't have a whole lot of income at that point. But as soon as I let her go, my calendar opened up so much and I was able to take on two different clients who were paying me more, respected me more, and I had so much more fun working with. So I just want you to keep that in mind. All right, the third thing that you should not do as a virtual assistant is you should never, ever, ever work without receiving payment up front and without a contract in place. I don't want you to have to chase down clients to get paid after you've already done the work for them. If you've been in the dating world, you know about like getting ghosted. I don't want you getting ghosted by a client. That is not fun having to chase somebody down. It's a pain in the butt. So just do yourself a favor and make sure you get paid 100% of the money front. Now, if it is a really large project, like for me, I do website design, I'll take 50% of the payment up front, and then I take the remaining 50% halfway through the project. I never take it at the end, okay? So make sure you're getting paid up front, and make sure you also have a contract in place to protect you, just in case you ever need to chase a client down, or if they're a pain, or whatever, you need to make sure that you have a contract in place. Now, I teach you how to make sure you get paid up front and how to set up your contract, how to find your ideal client, and how to figure out which services you want to offer in the Virtual Assistant Mama Academy. So if you are ready to just take that next step and really go all in on your virtual assistant business, the Virtual Assistant Mama Academy is for you. You can check out all the details about that at virtualassistantmama.com. Feel free to message me or email me if you have any questions about it. I'm an open book and I will tell you if I think it's a good fit for you. And if not, I will help point you in the right direction for you. All right, y'all. I hope this episode was helpful and we will see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I would love to bless you with a free gift as a thank you. All you have to do is leave a review of the show on Apple Podcasts Take a screenshot and send it to podcast at virtualassistantmama.com. I'll send you a code so you can snag my virtual assistant toolkit for free. And don't forget to come hang out with us in our free community, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash virtual assistant mama. I'm so honored to support you in your journey to becoming a virtual assistant. Until next week, y'all, keep following the dreams that were placed on your heart so you can be the present mama you've always wanted to be.